Hey everybody, this is the Drive On Podcast, where we talk about issues affecting veterans after they get out of the military. I'm your host, Scott Deluzio, and now, let's get on with the show. When you were a kid, did you ever get asked that question, what do you want to be when you grow up? I know I did. And I can't quite remember what I answered to that question, but recently my youngest son had his teacher ask him and the rest of his preschool class what they wanted to be when they grew up. And the response he gave was a bubble maker. He likes bubbles, and he likes to play with bubbles, so let's say a bubble maker. I can't blame him. I mean, it sounds like a pretty cool gig. But as an adult, we kind of have a little bit of a more realistic view on the world. All right, a a bubble maker is probably someone who fills a bottle with soap suds that uh, the kids use and take that little wand thing that they they blow the bubbles uh, and stick it into the bottle. That's probably what a bubble maker really is. I'm, I'm guessing that's not what he meant. But I'm not really sure. It's probably not too big of a job. There's probably not too many openings for a job like that, I wouldn't think. So when you, as a soldier transitioning out of the military, you kind of have to be a little more realistic than my five-year-old son was when he said he wanted to be a bubble maker. You have to be a bit more realistic about the jobs that are going to be available to you and the jobs that you're qualified to, to do. If you graduated high school and joined the military right out of high school and went into the infantry or artillery or something along those lines, you're probably going to have a harder time finding comparable jobs in the civilian job market than you would if you went into the military and became an electrician or uh, something along those lines. Now, that's not to say that it's impossible or that the experience that you gained in the military is going to be incompatible with any civilian job. I'm not going to say that at all. There's a lot of experiences that you've gained in the military that definitely are compatible with a civilian job. But I'm talking about that the the job training itself, that the infantry soldier uh, is going to find, is not going to find too many civilian jobs out there that are looking for someone who mastered their battle drills and things like that, who can kick in doors and shoot at bad guys. Law enforcement is probably the closest thing that I can think of that might be related to uh, something along those lines. But even still, it's not 100% related because there's lots of other details that you kind of need to know in order to be in law enforcement. So you might think to yourself, well, I'm a vet and I have, uh, I've made it, I'm good to go because employers are just looking to hire veterans and I'm out now. So, uh, I'll be good to go because I'm going to go and apply for a job and they're, they're just going to be like, yeah, we want you because you're a vet and we want to hire vets. But that's not reality though. Employers aren't looking to hire vets just because they're patriotic and they want to, uh, do that out of some sort of patriotic obligation that they might feel. What they're looking for is someone who can do the job that they're looking to fill first. Employers have a need, and they need somebody to fill that job. It's a solid need that they have. So you have to be able to do that job first. And then kind of as the icing on the cake, they're looking for people who have the discipline that you learned in the military and all the other qualities that that come from your, your time in the military. They're looking for people who have integrity uh, that you learned in the military. They're looking for all of those kinds of things as well. But they don't mean quite as much. Those, those qualities that you gained in the military don't mean quite as much if you're not able to do the job that they're hiring you to do. And if the employers now have to teach you and train you how to do the job the, the right way, which, I mean, if they can find somebody who's just as willing or able to do the job as you are, they're not going to be quite as keen to do that on the job training to teach you how to do the job if they have somebody else who already knows how to do it. So just because you're a veteran doesn't mean that you're going to have that leg up if you don't know how to do the job. 
itself already. So you have to be able to do the job first. Now, identify what skills you have that make you marketable to a potential employer. You want to know, am I good at certain things? Am I able to do certain tasks well? Do I have uh, just a natural affinity for certain types of jobs? Then you also look at the things that you're passionate about. Because you might naturally be great at certain things, but if you don't have a passion for it, you'll really be struggling to get out of bed every morning to get to your job that you're, you're starting to hate after a couple of years of, of working in. Because it's just not the thing that you're passionate about. So look at the things that you are passionate about. Maybe you don't have the, the skills in that particular field yet. But you might have a passion for that type of thing to, to push you to try to learn a little bit more about it. So if you're great at a certain job, but you're not passionate about it, you're not going to be the type of employee who goes out and learns more on their own. The type of person who takes additional classes or who reads up on what the industry is going through or who finds out what other competitors or, or other companies in that market are doing what they're up to. You're not going to be the type of person if you're not really passionate about that job that does that type of thing. So you might do good work. You might be a, a good employee, but you're not going to do those extras that get you to push ahead in your industry or in the, the job that you have. On the other hand, if you take your job or a skill or something that you are passionate about, maybe you're not that great at it right now, but if you're passionate about it, you're going to spend a lot of your free time learning about it. You're going to go and take classes, or you're going to watch YouTube videos, and you're going to read tutorials. Um, you're going to try to figure out the best way to do the job, uh, in maybe even in your spare time. You're going to invest time into this job uh, that you're doing, and you're going to be passionate about the job. You're going to read up on the industry. You're going to look into other competitors to see what they're up to. So you're going to do that type of stuff where, where somebody who isn't passionate about that job is not going to do that type of thing. But in that situation, you're going to ad advance much quicker when you're passionate about the job than you will if you're just good at it, but not really all that interested in it. All right, so narrow, narrow your focus down on what it is that you want to do, even where you want to be geographically. You need to narrow your focus down, and, and that might seem a little bit scary. There's a lot of, of job options out there. There's a lot of different industries, lots of uh, different careers and positions within each of these industries that you might be somewhat qualified for. So it might be tempting to kind of take a shotgun approach with your applications and apply to everything. Send the same resume out to dozens or hundreds of employers, and eventually one's going to stick, right? One of those employers are going to find that you'll be able to help them with whatever job it is that they have uh, for, for you. But the problem with that is, as an employer, you don't really want to take the time and try to match each candidate and say, oh, you know what, this, this kid has this qualification or that qualification. I can really see them doing good out in, in this particular field or this job or whatever. You need to be able to sell yourself. You need to smack them in the face with why you're the person for this job. Ask yourself, why am I the one who's going to make your company better for doing this type of work? You might feel like you're missing out on opportunities when you do it this way, but when you send out that shotgun approach to multiple employers, where you're sending the same resume out to dozens of, of different employers, when they receive your, your resume, it seems very non-committal to them. That shotgun approach is very generic and vague, and you're probably not going to get a callback, or at least not very many anyways with that approach. Instead, try to be more surgical about it. Write your resume specifically focused on the problem that this specific employer has. 
Be surgical. Narrow down your focus on that one industry, that one specific job, the type of job that you've been looking for. That might mean that you have to rewrite your resume several times for each job that you apply to. Now, here's an example. When when I was in the Army, I was really good at paperwork. Even a grunt infantry soldier like me can do paperwork, I guess. So I've always just really been good at organizing and compiling things, putting together stuff and file it in an organized manner. I was very detailed and focused in that regard. And my platoon sergeant in Afghanistan actually had me manage the entire platoon's uh, records, all of the paperwork, which in and of itself, if you think about it, he gave me a, a file box, a bunch of folders, and uh, there was a folder for each soldier in our platoon, and inside each folder was a bunch of papers. It wasn't that hard. I mean, I took a box, uh, I was given some papers, and I put those papers in the right folder, and I closed the box, and that's essentially the extent of what I did with that paperwork. It wasn't rocket science. It wasn't anything super intense. I was just keeping track of records. Now, if I'm applying for an office job, and I'm just getting out of the military, and I don't have any experience in an office job, a potential employer might look at this and say, well, he held a box. Who cares? We're not going to look at this guy for this job because he hasn't really shown us that he has any kind of experience with the clerical duties or the administrative uh, side of things that, that he might be responsible for in this job. But you can twist this, the story a little bit. And I'm not saying lie or inflate what it is that you did necessarily. Uh, that That's not what I'm trying to say at all. But you can twist it a little bit and and the employer might be able to eat the, the stuff up that you did. So on a resume, instead of putting, I carried around a box of files that like a monkey could do, like it doesn't really take much smarts to do that type of thing. On a resume, you can put something like, I maintained administrative files and record keeping standards for 40 members of a platoon, which included documents affecting things like promotion, awards, evaluations, and, and things like that. And it sounds a heck of a lot better than he kept a box under his bunk. You know, so take your own personal experience and, and use that to apply it to a particular job that you might be looking for. So if I was applying for an office job, that might be a great thing to put on a resume since it shows that I'm organized and I can maintain my files and, and the record keeping and, and all that type of stuff. It shows that I have those experiences. Even if you are responsible for administrating your your unit's uh, ur- your analysis test, the drug test, you can turn that into a relevant experience to a civilian employer. Even if you'll never be administrating a uh, drug test in that that role that you're applying for, you know we all joke about that type of job. You know, having to you know stare at another guy while he's peeing into a cup, and we have to stand there and watch that, but. Don't put it like that. Like, if you put it into those terms, it just sounds dumb. It sounds like not something that's really worthwhile to that potential employer. Um, But it was an uncomfortable thing that we had to do. And so whenever we're faced with uncomfortable things, we joked about it. And and that's just kind of how we dealt with things. Um, So we kind of, in our minds, we minimalized what it was that we were actually doing. But instead, we're not talking about a way to joke about this uh, in a resume or an application or, or something. Instead, rephrase what you did so that it makes sense to the civilian employer. So say something like, you ensured your unit's effectiveness through the administration of your analysis testing or, or something like that. So so that way you ensured that your, your unit was uh, ready to deploy or ready to accomplish whatever their mission was um, through... Um, making sure that the the members of your your group were holding up those standards. Um, so that shows a potential employer that you have integrity, that you were chosen to do that type of job because you have the integrity to basically make sure that nobody is going to be um, you know cheating on that test and and pouring someone else's urine into their their cup um, to kind of skate by on on getting caught with drugs in their system. So it shows the employer that you have integrity, that you have the administrative abilities to maintain the records and not mix up, you know, who peed in what cup or whatever. 
you know, that go along with the, this test. It ensures that you had integrity, make sure the guys weren't cheating um, on the test so that you would be effective when you were called up to do whatever job it was that you were, were called up to do as, as a whole. So just take even the small experiences, those mundane day-to-day things that seem like they suck. You know, even things like cleaning the latrine. Like if, if you're the guy who's responsible for organizing the latrine cleanup duty, there's some leadership qualities there that are involved and you can talk about that stuff. Maybe you don't want to get as specific as saying you scrubbed each urinal 57 times and all this type of stuff. You don't want to get into that kind of detail, but really talk up the leadership skills that you developed during that type of experience. You know, how you, you organized your party of guys to, uh, you know, go and clean certain areas and, and do it with to certain standards and meet certain time criterias, uh, things like that. Also, when you're looking for jobs, when you're applying for jobs, you want to think about your family. Now, your family, if it's anything like mine, it's a huge part of your life. And you want to make sure that you're not just jumping into something that your family's not going to be able to support. You're not jumping into something that your family doesn't think is a real good fit for you. Or moving to a location that your family doesn't want to necessarily move to. So talk to your family and let them know what it is that you're thinking. Ask for their opinions. You know, your spouse, your your kids your parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, all that kind of stuff. Ask them, and if you need help with things, reach out to them. Now, there's no shame reaching out when you need help with, with something. I mean, we do it all the time. We ask for help, and that's a good thing because you're only as good as you are. You like you only have so many uh, capabilities by yourself, but if you can leverage some of the other assets that you have available to you, like your family members and the knowledge that they have or uh, whatever, you become just that much better. So when you take your own experience and you add in an outside perspective, it'll make you that much better. And it's going to show in your applications, in your resumes or whatever. You you also want to make sure that you know the job requirements for the position that you're applying for or the positions that, that you might be uh, applying for and know whether or not you already qualify for them. Employers are going to be way more likely to interview someone that they know has a qualification or for the job that they're applying for. And they're not going to waste their time on somebody who sends in some generic resume who may or may not have the skills for a particular job. Most job descriptions will be pretty specific if there are certain qualifications or certifications that are required. So you'll know that type of stuff and know whether or not you're able to do that job pretty much up front. If you're not, go out and take classes or get the qualifications or certifications or licenses that are required for the job. Those jobs might also have those things that are not necessarily required, but the nice-to-have certifications or qualifications. Try to get those things too, because that gives you a step up above the civilian or to the other um, candidates for the job who might just be doing the bare minimum, who might be sending out those generic resumes, who might just have the minimum qualifications to get the job. But if you have those extras, those extra certifications, that would be those nice to have skills in, in that area. For example, it might be nice to have knowledge of a particular software. So that way you're not learning it while you're working. So go take a class and figure it out. Like, learn it. The software is not impossible to learn. If you're not that great with computers, the job you might be applying for might require that you do some work on the computer. And the more you know before you get into the actual job, the easier it's going to be. If the job requires that you know uh, Microsoft Excel, for example, you know, that the spreadsheet uh, software, because for the job, you have to maybe enter uh, inventory numbers on the spreadsheet or something like that. And maybe you don't know the first thing about Microsoft Excel. Well, it's going to be much harder for you uh, because on day one on the job, if you happen to get hired, 
you're going to be sitting there and you're going to have to be entering these inventory numbers and figuring out how to use the software all at the same time. So go pick a class and go figure it out. A lot of rec centers and community centers or places like that will offer these classes. Uh, Community colleges have classes on things like that. And even some military bases will have career readiness type courses that they'll provide free of charge to military members. And a lot of times those classes are a very, very low cost if taking them at a local college or someplace like that. If you qualify for the GI Bill, you can even possibly use some of those funds that are available to you to take some of these classes uh, to get you ready for the job uh, that you're applying for. And the fact that you're taking these classes and that you're getting these qualifications, even if they're not just the bare minimum requirements, it shows that you're committed to your own self-improvement to a potential employer. And they like seeing that because it's not likely to stop if you're that type of person. It's not going to stop when you first get that job. You're going to be committed to improving yourself because you want to improve yourself. You're going to want to do that next course or that next level of certification or whatever to get better. And not only are you going to get better, you're probably going to get promoted too. the more skills that you have. You're going to move up in the ranks as you get better at the thing that you're applying for or that you're working on. So that commitment to self-improvement is something that employers want to see because they want you for this particular job right now, but they also can see that a year from now or two years from now, they're going to have this opening coming up and they're going to need somebody uh, to be a little bit more advanced than what you are right now. But since they know that you're committed to this process of self-improvement, you can use this time to develop your skills and take additional classes, get additional certifications and and move on to the next level, uh, you know, a few years from now. I also recommend that you apply early to the jobs that you're looking for if you're still in the military with a few months left. Apply now and and start applying. You might get some companies that you apply to that can't wait six or nine months, uh, whatever it is that you have left in, in order to hire you. But don't look at that as an obstacle that you need to get over. Look at that as an opportunity. You went on this interview. You might have gone to the interview and started talking to this employer, and you may have never been on an interview before in your life. Well, you went on this interview with this company that isn't going to hire you, so at least you get practice with interviewing. And now you've got those butterflies out of your stomach, that first interview jitters out of the way. Now you kind of know what to expect the next time you go into an interview. And they're probably going to ask similar questions at the next interview that you go to uh, versus the, the first one, especially if, if it's for the same type of job in the same type of industry. So you've gotten that out of the way. You know what to expect now. You might even be better prepared now going into it, into the next job uh, interview that might actually hire you because they can wait for six months. They have that flexibility built into their their company. They may have this need for someone with your qualifications, but for the right person, they might be willing to wait a few months in order to have you get started uh, after you transition fully out of the military. So you've practiced the interview already, right? And so now you're going to be that much better on other interviews. Or you might get lucky and you might Go on that first interview and the employer might like you, know that you're you're the guy for the job or the lady for the job, and say that they're willing to wait until you get out of the military in order to have you start working there. But if you're not applying for jobs early before you get out of the military, there might be that period of time when you're unemployed, when that last day that you're in the military, you're you're get a paycheck and you're transitioned out and now you're a civilian. If you don't have a job lined up right now, where's that next paycheck coming from? Unless you you have a loaded bank account uh, because you didn't buy that Mustang at 29% interest when you first got into the military. Unless you've been saving up lots of money and have a contingency plan for this, you're 
probably going to be looking for some way to pay the bills, to keep the lights on for your family after you get out of the military. People aren't just going to be throwing jobs at you just because you're a veteran. So start applying early. And if it doesn't work out that you can't get a job while you're uh, still in the military, no one's willing to hire you until after you get out. Go back to some of those companies afterwards. Maybe you made a good impression on some of these companies, and maybe they still haven't filled that position. Maybe at the time they didn't think that they could wait, but maybe they really could because they haven't found the right person. So go back to them and say, hey, I'm, I'm out now. Is this job still available? And they might say, oh, yeah, sure. I remember you. Uh, and the job's still available. Come back in. Let's talk about it and, and see if we can get you set up here. That might be something that happens. So the earlier you start applying, the better off you're going to be. Finally, I want to talk about networking. You want to get out and talk to other people who are in the field that you want to work in. A lot of industries have networking events where you can go and you can meet other people. Some people who run companies, uh, maybe other companies that have a need that maybe you didn't even realize you had a skill. Um, that was one of those marketable skills that I was talking about. But you might end up talking to someone who's like, yeah, I really need someone who can do another certain thing. And, and you're like, oh, I didn't even realize that anyone would hire someone to do that type of thing. So you want to do these types of networking events if you can, you know, if they're around you. And get FaceTime with these potential employers or potential peers in your industry that you're, you're looking for to, to work in. There's a website, meetup.com, that lists different events like this, and you can search for it by your area, wherever you happen to be located. Um, a word of caution about networking, though. You don't want to go to some networking event specifically looking for a job. You don't want to go in and uh, to the first person that you meet say, hey, do you have a job? I, I'm looking for a job. I want to work for you. I want to, I want to do this, you know, whatever the industry is or whatever the job is that you're, you're looking for. Um, I, I'm, I can do this type of job for you. Instead, don't go in there asking um, for advice about how to get into the industry. I, let people know, hey, I'm a soldier or airman or marine or sailor, whatever you are. I'm getting out in a couple months and I'm looking to get into this industry. Who do I talk to? Uh, what? Who are the key players in this industry? Who can I get to know? How can I break into this industry? Um, what do I need to know? What are the qualifications that I really need? I, I know the qualifications that are on the job postings on, on the company's websites. Um, I know what they said there, but what do I really need? You know, as, as someone who works in this industry, what, do, what would you say you really need? What's going to make me stand out on my resume? And so talk to people about that kind of stuff. And maybe you'll be talking to someone who happens to have a job opening at their company. And they might say, well, come apply for a job at our company because we have a position that you would be perfect for. And it might point you in the right direction. Even if it's not a job with their company, um, maybe they know of a company that's hiring in that field uh, that you might be a good fit for. Maybe they can make an introduction to their, uh, you know, somebody in that company. So you develop that relationship with people. So don't just go in thinking, what can I get out of this? What am I getting out of this event? Go in there and try to build a relationship with people and, and talk to them. Find out what they're looking for, what it is that they need, and, and talk to them. Figure out how people in this industry think and the problems that they're having. That way, when you go back and you write your resume, you can write the resume and address a specific pain point that they might be having or they may have talked about to you in these networking events. And it's like a mutually beneficial relationship. You're looking for a job and they're looking to solve a problem and you can kind of work it out that way. Plus, if you go into a networking event or something, um, some other event and your goal is to basically ask for a job, if the people don't have a job, the conversation is going to turn pretty awkward pretty fast. Uh, you go up to them and say, hey, I'm looking for a job. Can I talk to you about getting a job at your company or whatever? And they say, well, we're not hiring right now. And 
uh, now the conversation turns pretty awkward. Like, clearly you have nothing else that you want to say to them, and they have nothing else that they want to say to you. Um, so they're going to slowly start to just move away from you because, well, that's what people do when things start getting awkward. They don't want to stay in that awkward situation. So don't go in there making it all about you. Go there trying to build a relationship, get to know people, talk to them, and, and see how you can also work together in the future after you get out of the military. You might also want to go to some job fairs. You know, the job fairs are always around and they're always looking for veterans who meet certain criteria or have certain skills or, or qualifications. So check those out too. And go around and talk to the people who are at the job fairs. Um, get used to that face-to-face -to -face talking to potential civilian employers. Um, and in doing that, you're going to really help yourself and get that practice that you need for those, those future interviews. Finding a job doesn't really have to be that difficult, but you have to kind of be strategic about how you go about, go about doing it. Thanks for listening to the Drive On Podcast. If you want to check out more episodes or learn more about the show, you can visit our website, driveonpodcast.com, or on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Drive On Podcast. 